These ghost towns have been left completely untouched for their own reasons. From creepy stories, haunted places and scary stories, these are the top 5 ghost towns that were abandoned overnight part 2. Coming in at number 5 we have Ross Island. Located on an island in India closer to Southeast Asia than India, the island is known for beautiful beaches, unique marine life, coral reefs and largely undisturbed forests. But beyond the islands beautiful views and stunning wildlife lies a dark past. Ross Island is one of the 572 islands that make up the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Now the island is a ghost town where the remnants of a 19th century British settlement lie in ruins. In 1857, reacting to an unanticipated Indian revolt, the British Empire chose remote islands as the site of a penal colony. And Ross Island was one of them. The British first arrived in 1858 with 200 Indian convicts. The deadly task of clearing the thick jungle fell upon the inmates, while the officers stayed on the ships. Moreover, the development and town built at Ross Island began in 1858 and the prisoners were forced to build its buildings. The island was transformed to resemble a British town, with houses, offices, clubhouses, bakeries, stores, churches and everything else that the British would not miss when they were away from home. The British ruled Ross Island for more than 80 years up until nature was against the development. In 1941, a gigantic earthquake affected the island and left the town on the island completely ruined. The British thought thought rebuilding the town would not be worth it and overnight left the island in complete ruins. Abandoned in the 1940s, the island is now being reclaimed by nature. Homes, a massive church, ballrooms and even a graveyard all are in varying stages of decomposition, being taken over by an unyielding forest. In at number 4 we have Tlingua, Texas. Near the Mexican border you'll find the town of Tlingua, Texas. In the 1800s it was discovered that the area in which Tlingua was built was plentiful in cinnabar, a red mercury sulfide, from which mercury can be extracted. This caused an influx of miners to the area, but it wasn't until Jack Dawson's discovery and production of the area's first mercury in 1888 that it drew a population of 2000, and by 1900 there were 4 mining companies in the area. When the Chizos mining company company opened in the mid 1800s, workers and their families quickly relocated to the Tlingua, Texas. The Chisos Mining Company was founded and began operations in 1903 near Tlingua, Texas. The company specialized in the extraction of quicksilver and mercury. In 1799, Charles Harvard discovered that compounding the element produced fulminate mercury crystals, establishing its marketability. These crystals are useful in the production of gunpowder cartridges and shells. Mercury production had peaked during the First World War began to fall, thus Chiso's mining company had filed for bankruptcy and the miners began to trickle out. When the mine went bankrupt in 1942, Perry sold it and moved away. The population was around 3,000 at its peak, though it said that everyone up and left the municipality in the 1940s once the mercury was picked through. Thus, the once busy city became the ghost town we know today. It is now home to 110 people. By the end of the war, it was an abandoned ghost town. In at number 3 we have Kennecott, Alaska. It once flew flourishing town with businesses, shops, a train and a lively community is now left as a ghost town. The town of Kennecott in Alaska was flooded with people after copper was discovered in 1900. After the discovery, a group of wealthy investors formed the Kennecott Copper Corporation to mine the mountains above the Kennecott and Root glaciers. In the 27 years the mine was in full operation, the company and town grew significantly in fortune and people, and at its peak Kennecott employed 600 people. But by 1938 the copper was mostly gone, the mine was shut down and the town was left abandoned. The town was abruptly abandoned by its citizens, leaving most of their possessions behind. Since the middle of the 1950s the place had been completely deserted, with the railroad discontinued service that same year. Reports of ghosts along the abandoned tracks of the Kennecott train have been claimed for decades, while other visitors report having seen old tombstones along the route of the tracks, though the gravestones then vanish by the time the visitors make their return trip. Others have reported hearing disembodied voices and phantom children laughing. Reportedly, a 1990s construction project were halted after workers were scared away by the creepy sounds and unexplainable events. In at number 2 we have Exunan Tunich, Belize. 
I hope that's how you say it. Deep in the jungle of Belize lies an ancient ruins of an abandoned town that has been left to crumble. The town has been left abandoned for over 1,000 years, though before the abandonment of this large and populated town, Xunatunich was a thriving metropolis. The first construction at the site dates back to sometime in 200 AD, with the growth of the town continuing until its final days of functioning as a city. The town grew to consist of many temples and palaces, including its largest and most recognizable known as El Castillo. Xunatunich has lied abandoned since around 1000 AD. It is thought that due to consistent devastating events such as an earthquake and other natural disasters, caused the sudden evacuation of the large Mayan city around 700 AD. The disaster caused extensive damage to the main pyramid of Xunatunich. Although the city was reoccupied some time after, it only remained active for another 300 years before it was left completely unoccupied. After abandonment, the site remained empty, eventually being encapsulated by the surrounding jungle and nature, until it was rediscovered by explorers in the early 1890s. The name Xunatunich comes from the ghost stories that have haunted the ghost town for years. The ghost story of Xunatunich is rumoured to start in 1893, after the first sighting of the ghost happened. The first ghost sighting goes as one morning a man who was part of a research team working on the site saw what he described as a Mayan maiden ascending the staircase of the Xunatunich's main pyramid. This vision caught him by surprise, so he continued to watch as the woman walked further up the stairs. Suddenly she stopped and turned to look at the man, where he was able to get a glimpse of her glowing red eyes that pierced his soul. She then turned to continue her climb to the top of the pyramid, where she would disappear amongst its stone columns. The shocked man quickly assembled a team to search for this woman, yet no trace of her was ever found. Since this sighting, countless more visitors have reported to also spot the ghostly maiden who haunts Exuna Tunich. She is always described to be ascending El Castillo's stairs. To this day, the sightings and reports from visitors continue. The ghost frequency is what gives Exuna Tunich its name, which translates to the Stone Lady in the Maya language. Some believe that this Maya maiden have formerly lived within the city many years ago. Others believe that she was a human sacrifice, trapped to relive her last moments of ascending to the top of the pyramid where her ritual would have been conducted. Then there are a few who believe her to be some sort of ancient godly spirit linked to the site and the Mayan culture. And finally, in at number one, we have Calico, California. The ghost town of Calico can be found in California, midway between Barstow and Yermo. The beginning of the town started in 1875 and was built under the impression that there were prospects for silver in the Calico Mountains. But in the spring of 1883, many of the local miners left Calico when borax was discovered three miles east at Borate. Though Calico again boomed in 1884 as additional silver discoveries were made. Gaining a population of some 2,500, the town supported two dozen saloons and gambling dives that never closed, as well as more establishments such as the church, public school, dance school and a literary society, along with dozens of retail businesses. By the late 1800s, Calico was bustling with prospectors searching for their their fortunes and the Calico Mining District became one of the richest in the state. Calico's final decline began when the price of silver fell in the 1890s, but the brake production kept it alive, even through the panic of 1906. They tried to hold on and borax for a time substituted for the shiny metal that had been the Calico's fortune. Calico kept churning out valuable minerals until it finally exhausted its supply in the 1920s. Calico was soon abandoned and left to gradually decay in the desert sun until little remained, but in 1951 it was purchased by the Walter Knott, an ex miner, and rebuilt as a modern ghost town. He restored the town to mostly how it was, in certain cases, rebuilding some of the old structures as they were back in the 1880s. Considered one of the top haunted locations in California, Calico has its fair share of ghost stories, when one of the most active and known ghosts of the abandoned town is Lucy Lane. Lucy is often seen in a black lace dress walking back and forth between her home and store. Others have allegedly seen phantom school teachers and other residents who have been known to grab visitors' legs or pinch their ankles. Some visitors have also reported seeing a floating red light inside the buildings, while other visitors have reported extreme cold spots throughout the mine and an eerie feeling in various places of the town. Well there we have it, thanks for tuning into this video, I'll see you in the next one. But it wasn't until Jack Dawson's discovery, Jack Dawson, that's him from Titanic, he, maybe he survived. Actually forget this part, it kind of finished when I said, scroll up a bit, huh? Uxen...